Since I know I'm bad at teasing, I'm not even gonna try it and just spoil it right away. Because I mean, I know I already reviewed the Xiaomi Redmi Note 4 that I liked a lot. But for some reason, I like the 4X a lot more. And I'm not even quite sure if it's just because of the Snapdragon 625, maybe the black color that I prefer or some other minor improvements that they did since the Note 4. But all I can say is as for right now is that this phone at the moment is the pretty damn near closest thing to a perfect mid-ranger. Not just in terms of price, but in general. And this is something we will see throughout the whole review. So let's just start off with the first thing, the design and build quality. One thing that I want to point out compared to the silver Note 4 that I had is that the coating on this black version seems to be different because it actually causes my fingers to sweat a little bit more than normally because I'm not even talking about finger oil but this phone this coating actually made my fingers sweat and along with the actually already very smooth and slippery sides this phone is a little bit on the slippery side but due to the curves on the sides and not being all that big even though it's not super compact with quite some bezels I have to say it's still quite secure to hold on it didn't appear to be an issue in normal use but but just something that I wanted to point out. But one thing that I just want to praise is the build quality for this price range because you really have to bend it hard to get even the slightest click out of it. The buttons don't wiggle at all, have a great feedback and they are also in my opinion absolutely rightly placed. And that's why I definitely like the design and build overall absolutely a lot. Fingerprint reader as well is also quite good, very fast once the screen is unlocked as you can see here and then it's a very good one but the screen turn on time is not quite the fastest one. Then we have the LEDs here, you can see the camera which is flush and as you can see the plastic part actually is very subtle and you don't really see a big difference here which is nice compared to the Note 4. Then we also have the microphone, IR blaster and the headphone jack. On the left side there is the SIM card and SD card tray. On the bottom we still have micro USB, that's up, I think normal though for this price range. The speaker on the right and on the left side we have the microphone here as well. I've already talked about the button. One thing that I want to mention about it, the front is that we have a notification LED and we have capacitive buttons that do light up but I turned that off. Otherwise you can see of course the black border here and that's why I would say let's already get to the next thing which would be the display. What you can change here is the color temperature and the contrast. You can use automatic, maybe increased or standard, but I actually like increased because I like a little bit more pop on phones. And then I have to say, it's maybe not the very best display because with a brightness of about 450 lux, it's not the brightest one, but 450 is for me where it gets good enough. Then the viewing angles, maybe not the most stable ones, but still absolutely fine. White can be set right. The black could have maybe been a little bit deeper, but after all, I have to say the calibration and the quality of this display is still so good that I didn't quite could get, give it a very good, but just a really good, but this doesn't change the fact that it's a fully satisfying display and would be good enough for me as my daily driver because there are better ones out there, yes, but this does the job and absolutely nicely. So I would say let's go into the speaker. What's to say about the speaker? It is quite loud, even though I also have to mention that it does distort on the maximum volume and maybe a click below that. But th even then, if you don't use it that loud, it is still loud enough. And the sound overall, I would say, is good actually quite nicely balanced, maybe a little bit, just a tad hollow. But along with the good volume and the definitely way far away from bad sound, it actually is still a quite good speaker. Now the headphone jack is maybe okay, just about okay, but this still means something these days because usually I say it's average and not good enough, so this with okay is better than most other phones and that's something. So let's get into the next thing here that would be performance. So let's kill all the apps. And once we launch a few, we will see that it is, like all the other Snapdragon 625 phones, maybe not the most snappy one, but definitely does a super reliable job, a very solid one, because all apps still launch fine. And if you don't do any speed tests side by side, this is definitely something that you shouldn't bother about, because everything else gets handled so nicely by this SoC, because as you can see, sometimes, of course, once you load something completely new, but as you can see, very smooth, very nice, especially in the browser, but all other apps pretty much completely lag free. Sometimes still, since you enter an app, it will lag, but this is normal and something that just happens, especially since it does some syncing in the background. I have to say, absolutely nice. Also, not a whole lot of motion blur, something that I usually don't like so much to see, but it's not really the case here, and it fully knows to deliver. It is a very nice performer, 
It stays reliable at all times. It just knows to deliver. And this is a performance level that I would say should be good enough for like 90% out there who don't need the fastest flagship out there overall. And it will absolutely convince you. Same is also the gaming experience. Because I've said it already so many times that the Snapdragon 625 knows to deliver very nice medium frame rates at about 30 frames and it's that very consistent because no not really any frame drops or skips it also shines in terms of temperatures because it doesn't heat up at all and this means you can play all the even higher demanding games without any issues for a very long period of time since the soc is so efficient and already talking about efficient the next part here would be the battery yes it maybe charges a little bit longer with about two hours and 45 but therefore we have a little bit of a bigger battery and I didn't actually use the stock charger since it is an imported one and I didn't want to use an adapter, but I used the quick charge 3.0 charger. But this value still is absolutely fine in my opinion, especially since the battery life lows to absolutely convince because about eight to 9% for an hour of YouTube is definitely on the better side. And then it's the battery life that absolutely knows to deliver because what I got on mobile data only was about six and a half to maybe seven hours with a brightness of about 30%. And, and that's kind of the highlight here. Wi-Fi, I got about 12 hours plus on one day, if you could use that on one day. But I just want to point out that yes, like on pretty much every other Snapdragon 625 phone, for me, the difference between Wi-Fi only and mobile data is a little bit bigger than on most other phones. But this is a whole combination, especially with the excellent standby drain that is pretty much not even existent. This is still fantastic battery life. So let's get into the software. And yeah, what I have to point out is that the stock theme, in my opinion, is absolutely hideous. So you can use the theming engine, which absolutely does a nice job because there are very many re really great themes actually available. We don't have though an app draw, but of course, if you want to just use any different third party launcher and then you will get quite a good amount because you don't really get the most features because you can change the buttons, maybe some extra functionality with a long press and so on. We have, of course, do not disturb second space. But what is actually weird here, and I want to point that out, as you can see here, I have Android version 7.0 with the 8.3 MIUI beta. But I don't really see any MIUI features because a double tap on the recent apps doesn't bring me to my last app. And I also still think this is a little bit of a clunky way because as you can see, this animation is quite long and it doesn't always react lag free. I also didn't see the option to use the split screen view and so on. And even though I think it is an absolutely solid and actually quite nice UI, especially in terms of design, the apps look quite nice. And if you use, of course, it depends on which ROM you use, it actually knows to deliver. But since it is a Snapdragon 625 device, there should also be custom ROM support. So you should just keep in mind, as it is right now, it would be good enough for me, but I'm still missing a few of the NuGet features after all. But maybe that's a good thing because therefore we don't have the standby drain issue of NuGet yet, maybe as well. So let's get into the camera. And what I have to say is I almost gave the front facing camera a great. And that's why it definitely easily gets a very good, because as you can see, very sharp pictures, nice amount of details. There could be maybe some more here on my forehead, but otherwise colors seem very natural, exposure and so on. And even indoors, it manages to stay just as sharp. And that's very impressive in my opinion. I just have to give it to that. Absolutely knows to deliver here in all aspects. Really great. And even the video, as you can see, looks nice, sharp and everything else just fine. Low light here with the flash and without absolutely okay and i would say it's still a quite good low light camera because yes you see a little bit more grain it's not the sharpest one and the shutter takes a little bit longer but for this price range this is great but i actually have to say i'm very impressed about the main camera because as you can see a lot of details very sharp and actually the autofocus worked super reliable i, I in my opinion got great results pretty much no bad shots exposure times shutter times everything <laughs> exposure times was wrong, I know that. But as you can see here, the pictures absolutely know to deliver. A very high quality and yeah, this is impressive. I'm almost speechless. I did not nearly expect such a good quality of this price range because even way more expensive phones could not deliver in this regard. Now, 4K video, yeah, as you can see, maybe just with, I think, 40 megabits, not the highest bitrate, and therefore you see some artifacting on faster movement. But what I like quite a lot, as you can see here, the autofocus worked very reliable, not really any issues, it actually knows to deliver. Yes, on faster movement, it gets a little bit fuzzy. It's also maybe not the shake, most shake-free camera, 
But overall, the quality knows to deliver. Yes, there is room for improvement. That's why I will call it maybe quite good or a really good video cam. But once again, for this price range, this is highly respectable, actually impressive in some way. And that's why I would say, let's already jump into the pros and cons. Here, I just wanna point out once again, the superb build quality, not just for the price, but in general. Then we have a very good fingerprint reader, maybe not the fastest screen turn on times. A really good display, almost actually very good, a quite loud and good speaker. It only starts just a little bit. And okay, headphone jack, very good performance. Still overall, fantastic battery life, especially since it also has, especially on Wi-Fi, excellent battery dra standby drain. Good software, not perfect though. Impressive camera for the price because when we check, we have very good selfie cam. We have a quite good low light cam, very good photo cam and a quite good video cam. And what is actually definitely something I have to point out that this phone is available in a band 20 version and the value for about 170 euros for the three gigabyte version and about $200 for the four gigabyte version is amazing value. And on the negative sides, we don't even have a lot because what you can see here is the slightly odd coding of the body that I just mentioned. Then the speaker distorts a little bit on maximum volume. MIUI may not be for everyone, not really any nougat features yet. And usually it has to be imported. But if you are willing to import your phone and you are looking at a price range at about $200, I think this is the only phone that you should even consider because I've reviewed a few other ones since I've seen the market and I know the Note 4 and the Note 3 were already very popular phones. But this, like I said already from the start, is pretty much damn near perfect because this phone, if you would get something on your local market, would cost you about a double the price here because you you could compare this side by side with a Lenovo P2, also with a maybe Motorola or a Moto Z Play because it can easily compete with those. The display can, the speaker, the headphone jack quality, the overall build quality, and even some things are better than with great battery life. The software, okay, and maybe not for everyone, but to get used to it or maybe even use a custom ROM will give you an experience for under $200 that I don't see you getting anywhere nearly close because all the qualities are way above its price range and I, I just can't really say anything else but this phone is highly impressive and I could easily use this if I would be into tablets or 5.5 inches as my daily driver because the quality is absolutely no good to deliver and I know this maybe sounds weird because how could such a cheap phone be that good but yeah it has to be imported that's maybe the one downside usually you have to do that not everyone wants that but like I said if you want to then you get something way better than on your local market. But this usually is not for everyone. But otherwise, this would have been it. If you liked it, maybe a thumbs up, otherwise a subscription and leave me some comments down below. Okay, until next time. Bye.